The first international women's conference entitled Shakti the strength of a woman was held at the Art of Living International Center in Bangalore in June 2005. There followed two others in 2007 and 2009. The theme for the first was Ichha Shakti, strength and will, Kriya Shakti, strength and action, and Jnana Shakti, strength and knowledge. For the second, it was celebrating women. The conferences saw the participation of women from all walks of life politicians lawmakers social reformers media persons artists doctors and educationists After the resounding success of these three conferences the fourth international women's conference waves of beauty unfolded in Bali The conference was co-hosted by the Art of Living the International Association for Human Values and the Indonesian Ministry of Culture and Tourism the magical islands of the gods was the perfect setting for the deliberations that were to follow the conference was inaugurated by the chairperson of the international women's conference mrs bhanumati narasimhan and other dignitaries Over 350 delegates from 44 countries participated making this a truly global conference. Women from all walks of life and from different backgrounds and cultures were present creating the perfect platform for interaction, connection and exchange of ideas and experiences from diverse viewpoints. We have come to a level we have we are leaders in our own capacity. We have achieved something. We have come to a stage wherein you can say that yes i have achieved something but from that platform from that level do you see a beautiful world we have to attend to our inner power inner strength inner source so when your inner and outer world is in harmony then you see a beautiful world The Vishalakshi Awards dedicated to the memory of the mother of His Holiness Shri Shri Ravi Shankar were presented to two organizations the Ministry of Culture and Tourism of Indonesia for their contribution to women development and to the World Bank for their efforts in promoting women leadership in fragile nations No occasion in Bali is complete without the traditional Balinese dance A troupe of 6 young girls performed the Pushpa Maker dance and the Sita Ram Si mask dance was gracefully presented by senior dancer Ayu Bulantrisna Jilantik. The Joged Leko dance an entertaining folk dance was the last recital. These dances lent a festival flavor to the inaugural proceedings. consider ourselves the lucky ones from the fortune layer of the global society who are destined to help others being grateful let us endeavor and put in all effort to achieve goal set for ourselves set for our families the thing women have yet to learn is nobody is going to give you the power you just have to take no one is going to give it to you on a silver platter take it with the turbulent economy that many countries facing now jobs may not may not be available for men and women become the primary breadwinner in the family if the society where they live in does not does not do the adaptive work of changing this traditional way of thinking the changing economic construct could create a psychological problem for both the men and women in the society our mission i would say is uh, is to connect globally and enable locally i call it nalar and naluri sense and sensitivity where you could touch someone or um you could feel somebody's needs i've been bratting away for the past 55 years in indonesia and that is why i think we got what we wanted to do done 
When talking about women's leadership in these development organizations, one would be tempted to distinguish men and women, or women from men, thus introducing unnecessary polarization, as has been done throughout times. Enough is enough. Instead, I argue that we should come together as one in order to pursue the opportunities to create wealth for the poor, to create peace for humankind, to deliver a better world for our children, and to bring about heaven on earth. Spirituality gives us inner peace and contentment. And this is what I got from the art of living. When I felt that, I said, I have something to do for my society, for my women in Arabia. We have started in doing trauma relief in Iraq in 2003. And this way, we have about 250,000 widows we are working with now in Iraq. Time and again, take a few moments to reflect from within. Just be quiet. Calm the mind. His Holiness Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, the founder of The Art of Living, addressed the gathering and led the delegates into meditation. Take a deep breath in and breathe out with a smile. Give a big smile to yourself. Om Shanti 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 This conference has just been an explosion of new opportunities to meet women who are doing amazing work. And the nice thing, you know, the goal that, come on, we hand in hand to make a peace. This is a very unique seminar to me you just not only gaining gaining knowledge or tips but in here you really share after this wonderful morning today we start with the second session of our fourth international women's conference madhurya Exploring the source of harmony within. There's an ongoing negotiation between managing freedom and responsibility. It, you know, it's a little bit like we all need structure in our lives, but we all need freedom. And there's always this careful line that we walk between the two. And, and finding balance in our lives is really the key, I think, to, to right living. It is very, very important today to break these barriers and look at very, very holistic and integrative style of leadership. And that integrative style of leadership is one which can come a lot from madhurya within us, harmony within us. If we all ladies, hand in hand, work together, make all the networking, even the highest mountains, you can move. Why is it important to look at the harmony within us? It's simple, you know, society is made up of individuals. And if the individuals are not peaceful within themselves, how can we expect the society to be peaceful and harmonious? There was a person who told me once, yeah, go hire a creative director. Yeah, but where do I buy creativity in the creative director, right? So for, I, I learned this personally that the only source of that is our consciousness. In spirituality, prayers, rituals, meditations, yoga, Tao, and cultural exp expressions teaches that life is a process and we and the world are always evolving. It is the woman that sits in silence, that can hear the whispers of the sea, the waves of beauty, the transformation of who we are to create procreation and have a divine source with integrity as a smile that inner peace, inner wealth I have gained through this foundation with the Guru Shade, I can stand anybody in front of me. You are the congressman, I can talk about my, my experience and they share it with me, they agree with me. With this um, ground that as a foundation, we can move together. With the professional sector, you have a different field. But as a normal being like this, if I didn't have this spirituality with me, 
where would I be? I would not even like to imagine myself. All the money and fame and beautiful luxury life, did that make me happy? I don't think so. Equal, when you talk about equal, when people are equal, they all automatically, it leads to competition. It leads to infights. It leads to separations. You focus on saha or complementary. It leads to dependency. And when you're dependent on someone, it leads to partnership. It leads to more togetherness. are boring and irritating but this is exceptionally interesting very inspirational I mean for me who comes now from the US it's most inspiring seeing like my colleague here women from all over the world from the Gulf from Iraq and you know giving so much to change and leadership for change so I'm very happy to be here I particularly enjoyed uh, Ibu Yeni Wahid's talk and also Obin. I think the story of Obin, it was from her heart and I think it inspired everybody in the room. Different than other conferences, everyone's not here in their gray and brown and, and, uh, and black business suits, but it is a wealth of color, all of these waves of beauty, which are a complete reflection of the country itself. So it's really inspiring to be to have that balance, that synergy between the environment that we're in and all the beautiful women that are here. In different traditions, there's a different idea of uh, what is considered beautiful. And what has happened in our globalized world is with the dominance of certain powers is we have come to negate and undermine traditional values of beauty which have a lot to do with giving and prosperity and internal qualities to just judging everything by a single paradigm of what is considered beauty. And one of the things that always mattered to me was the fact that, you know, I was always rejected in school. It's not strange. I mean, my, my school teacher, my music teacher, Miss Davidson, always threw me out of the class because she said I didn't have a voice that fitted the box. All through our lives, we have to fit into certain boxes. Over the years in the film industry, I um, ultimately had to fight this tag of this oh so beautiful because I thought it was a very limiting tag. It uh, definitely did set uh, very, very, um, very tight boundaries because people never, s I would work very hard on a film, um, really work towards a role, and in the end the critics would write, Poonam Dillon looked very beautiful. I mean, I used to say, oh God, that is all. They don't talk about your work, they don't talk about your effort. In the end, they just give you this very cliched line at the end of it. You know, there's nothing wrong in wanting to look good because I think the first, the first uh, impression you make is on, you know, your outer, exp outer, what you're wearing. However, beyond that, there is an unspoken communication, your presence, which is very important. And I think um, being in this industry, uh, helping people look good from outside and inside and, you know, creating that it, inner beauty is a privilege that uh, I think I'm bestowed with. Uh, if you talk about the concept of beauty, it's not the physical beauty, it's more like the inner beauty. But it's more listening to the call of the moment 
And that also, I feel, can only be done when, again, you're in touch with your spirit. When you, when you are meditating, when you are practicing these techniques, you can actually see what is needed in that moment of time. Song Chen, a filmmaker from China, elucidated the hardships of young girls in clothes factories in China. I want to offer you to come home when you leave here to look at your closet and look at the label and think about the hand that made them. Beauty is always uh, associated with uh, divinity. You know, one of the attributes of divinity is beauty. Satyam, Shivam, Sundaram. And Satyam is truth, Shivam is purity, and uh, Sundaram means beautiful. So it is the inner beauty that really matters. And uh, five things, five attributes are there for uh, a person who is beautiful. That is Vastram, Vacha, Vapusham, Vidya, Vinaya. This Vastram means the attire that we wear. Vacha, the way you express yourself, how you communicate to people. You know that your expression words are also very important. Vapusham, the personality, the, whenever you are you know, you have learned something and the way, if you're confident of a topic, then the way you speak. And then vidya, wisdom in you. And the last one is vinaya. If you, even if you have all these, even you may be very well attired, very well dressed, you may have confidence of speech and, you know, you may have good communication skills. But if you have no humility, then there is no beauty. So these five aspects contribute to the inner beauty, which really reflects in your outer self. It's the spirit and the relationship with women around the world can increase the empowerment of women. By achieving that, we can be active to gain prosperity and create peaceful world. One of the highlights of the conference was the initiation of a signature campaign to present to the government of the United States of America urging them to pass a bill to end violence against women. A banner with signatures of delegates from over 40 countries was subsequently handed over by the chairperson of the International Women's Conference, Srimati Bhanumati Narsimhan, to Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky on April 29, 2010 in Washington, D.C. The exuberance and energy of the two-day conference left the delegates inspired to take responsibility and lead initiatives in their respective communities. The main purpose of this conference has been to, you know, to get in touch with our inner self, inner strength, source of energy, and also, you know, how to synthesize and harmonize the outer and the inner world. Yeah, yeah, yeah.